this is how to compress a timing belt tensioner of the hydraulic variety. Uh, this one's off of Subaru. I've been doing a bunch of Subaru stuff lately, so anyway. Uh, same as on a Toyota or on a bunch of other cars that uses hydraulic tensioners. What you do is you've got a little hole in the end of the tensioner in here. I like to call them grenade tensioners because it's like pulling the pin on a grenade. You put them in a vise. You want to go slowly. If you go too fast, you'll destroy the tensioner. But if you go at a space about a pace about like this, it's nice and slow. And 90% of the time they're reusable and you're fine. Um, anyway, it just takes a little patience. When you get to the point where you can put a pin through there, then you just go ahead and do so. Sometimes you can find, you want something really hard metal because it's got to be small enough to get in there, but it really has to be tight. If you have some spring steel or something that's going to fit through that, then that's your best bet. Um, but that's how you do it. And you reinstall it, and then when all your timing marks are lined up and everything's pretty snug, you pull the pin. Boom! Tension. Here's a wide angle shot of the Subaru 2.5 liter. This one's out of a Forester 2002. Just did the heads on it, and I'm going to put the timing belt back on. This is the best way I've found to put the timing belt on a Subaru. I'll crank this one so that it's slightly clockwise so that the lines don't line up exactly on, and that allows me to get this one. You can see the little timing mark back up in there on the tooth and then also a green one on the face. They go with this one. Once I have that one on, then I do this one last. It'll be a little bit to the right once the slack's taken out of the belt on account of uh, this is where the tensioner is. It'll pull the slack out of it later. But you can see the white marks that come with the belt and the arrows that are on it point to the right because it's a clockwise rotating motor. And that's basically how you line those up. You'll notice that I'm missing a pulley right here on the tooth side and then I'm also missing a pulley right here on the smooth side. I'll install the tooth side pulley first. That's another thing where it's helpful to have that one over to the right is it enables you to get the tooth side one on first. So I'll do that and then show you what it looks like with that in and then with the... Okay, so I've got this pulley installed and things are getting really tight now. You can see that there's a lot of tension in this belt. The only place where there isn't a lot of tension as you guessed it, the last place where to do this one. Now what I've done in another video is I've compressed this hydraulic tensioner so it's up all the way and I've got a nail. I got a nail that was just a little bit too big to fit through and I trimmed it down. So that's that. Next we'll do that pulley and we'll be... Okay, so I've got all the pulleys on, everything set, it's ready to go. I've got my marks lined up here, here, and here. This one's a little off, that'll pull in once all the slack comes out from here. This slack's created by the pulleys that are just put in. You put this one in first and then this one in. Unless you're taking it off, then you take this one off and then this one. So, everything's set to go. I've got the nail, the grenade pin for the grenade pin tensioner. That's what I'd name it if I were in charge of things. It just sounds cooler. And bam! Pull it out. It'll expand, and then the next thing to do is to rotate this backward a little bit. I got a 17 millimeter socket. I'll let you see what I'm doing. Ah. Just putting stuff. Ah. I missed. It'll make everybody sick. Sorry about that. You just make that so it goes on. And then that marks on. Everything's tight all the way across. And that's how you load the timing belt. Rock and roll.